Another factor determining movement of inhalational agents to the brain is the arterial gas concentration. It refers to the levels of these agents in the bloodstream, particularly in the arterial blood. The concentration or the partial pressure of anesthetics in systemic arteries pumped from left ventricle is the final determinant of how much anesthetics passes into the brain. So, in this video we will discuss about arterial gas concentration and the uptake of anesthesia by peripheral tissues including the brain. All factors that affect alveolar concentration like inspired gas concentration, pulmonary uptake, ventilation and concentration in second gas effect also influence arterial concentration because gas exchange in the lungs determines how much anesthetic enters the blood. We have discussed those factors earlier. However, the extent of their effect on arterial anesthetic concentration may differ due to additional influences such as pulmonary blood flow and ventilation. So we will see how ventilation perfusion mismatch affects the arterial gas concentration. Ventilation perfusion or VQ mismatch occurs when the balance between airflow or ventilation and blood flow or perfusion in the lungs is disrupted, impairing the efficiency of gas exchange between the alveoli and blood. When ventilation and perfusion are not well matched, some areas of the lung receive more blood than ventilation, resulting in a low VQ mismatch, while others receive more ventilation than blood flow, leading to a high VQ mismatch. A high VQ mismatch occurs in conditions like chronic bronchitis, asthma, and acute pulmonary edema due to the destruction of alveoli or the accumulation of fluid within them. In contrast, a low VQ mismatch is observed in pulmonary embolism and emphysema, where reduced pulmonary blood flow and hyperinflated alveoli with increased airflow, respectively, are the underlying causes. When VQ is low, ventilation to certain alveoli is reduced while perfusion remains relatively normal. This means that less anesthetic reaches these alveoli, resulting in lower alveolar concentration in these regions. Since arterial blood leaving the lungs is a mixture of blood from both well-ventilated and poorly ventilated alveoli, the overall arterial anesthetic concentration is lower. With lower arterial anesthetic concentration, the anesthetic concentration in the brain rises more slowly, delaying the onset of anesthesia. This can result in prolonged induction times. Less soluble agents like desflurane are more affected by low ventilation perfusion mismatch. Less soluble anesthetics like desflurane do not dissolve much in blood, so their arterial partial pressure can quickly rise to match the alveolar concentration when ventilation is adequate. When ventilation is poor in some lung regions, less desflurane is transferred from the alveoli into the blood. On the other hand, highly soluble anesthetics like halothane dissolve readily in the blood. Because they are absorbed more easily, even if ventilation is reduced in certain areas, the blood still takes up the anesthetic efficiently. This means that the arterial concentration is less affected by low ventilation in some lung regions. When the ventilation perfusion ratio is high, it means that the alveoli are getting a lot of ventilation but not much blood is flowing past them. Even though these alveoli receive a high concentration of anesthetic gas, the low blood flow means that less of the anesthetic is picked up and delivered to the arterial blood. As a result, the arterial concentration of the anesthetic remains lower. In high VQ regions, both highly soluble and less soluble anesthetics have reduced arterial concentrations because perfusion is the limiting factor. Less soluble agents are affected because their already minimal uptake is further restricted by low blood flow, while highly soluble agents are affected because they lack sufficient perfusion to carry them away despite their ability to dissolve in blood. Tissue distribution involves transfer of anesthetics from the arterial blood into the brain and tissues. 
The process involves uptake into blood, distribution, equilibrium and redistribution. Inhalational anesthetics are first absorbed into the bloodstream via the alveoli in the lungs. Once in the bloodstream, the anesthetic is delivered to various tissues, with highly perfused organs like the brain, heart, liver, and kidneys receiving it quickly. The brain equilibrates quickly due to its high perfusion and lipid content, resulting in rapid induction of anesthesia. Next, the muscle group, which has moderate perfusion and capacity, absorbs the anesthetic more slowly but still contributes significantly to distribution. The fat group, with its low perfusion but high capacity, absorbs the anesthetic slowly and takes much longer to reach equilibrium. Finally, the vessel pore group which has very low perfusion, absorbs the anesthetic minimally and plays a negligible role in the initial distribution phase. If we plot the tissue concentration of anesthetics against the time, we will get a graph like this with vessel rich receiving the anesthetics faster than other tissue groups. Now, at the conclusion of anesthesia, the anesthetic concentration in the blood decreases. When this happens, the concentration gradient reverses and the anesthetic begins to redistribute from tissues back into the blood. The highly perfused tissues release the anesthetic quickly due to their rapid equilibration with blood. The muscle group releases the anesthetic at a moderate rate, while the fat group with its high capacity and low perfusion releases the anesthetic very slowly, often prolonging recovery. This differential redistribution affects the duration and offset of anesthesia, with adipose tissue acting as a reservoir that can delay recovery. Tissue distribution is influenced by several factors including the solubility of the anesthetic in blood and tissues, blood flow to the tissues and arterial concentration or partial pressure. We have already discussed arterial concentration of anesthetics. Let's begin with tissue solubility. Solubility of anesthetics in tissues is explained by blood tissue partition coefficient just like blood gas partition coefficient determining the uptake of anesthetics into the blood from alveoli. The tissue blood partition coefficient quantifies how much of an anesthetic is dissolved in the tissues like the brain relative to the blood at equilibrium. A higher coefficient means the anesthetic is more soluble in tissues. Therefore, for a given partial pressure, the concentration in the tissues will be higher compared to the arterial blood. For halothane, the brain blood partition coefficient is 1.9. A lower coefficient means the anesthetic is less soluble in tissues, therefore, for a given partial pressure, the concentration in the tissues will be lower compared to the blood. Nitrous oxide has a brain blood partition coefficient of 1.1. The solubility of anesthetics has two important implications. Firstly, anesthetics like halothane with high tissue blood coefficient are absorbed more, requiring prolonged time for the partial pressure in tissues like the brain to equilibrate with blood. This will prong induction time. An anesthetic with a low tissue blood partition coefficient will lead to a faster increase in the brain's anesthetic partial pressure resulting in a rapid onset of anesthesia. Similarly, it will be eliminated more quickly when the anesthetic administration is stopped. However most anesthetics have similar partition coefficient, so it doesn't make much difference in induction time. Secondly, tissues such as fat have a high tissue blood partition coefficient, meaning they absorb more anesthetics than other tissues for any given anesthetics. So a large amount of the anesthetic can be absorbed into fat tissue before the arterial partial pressure equilibrates with the fat partial pressure. This stored anesthetic is gradually released back into the circulation during recovery, which can prolong the overall effect of the anesthesia and delay emergence. The distribution of inhalational anesthetics is primarily determined by tissue blood flow. The highly perfused group, also known as the vessel-rich group receives about 75% of cardiac output despite making up only 10% of total body mass. 
Because of their high perfusion, inhalational anesthetics reach these tissues quickly, leading to rapid induction and early anesthetic effects. The moderately perfused muscle group receives about 20% of cardiac output at rest. Although muscle has a large mass, its lower perfusion compared to the vessel-rich group slows the equilibration of anesthetic agents. During prolonged anesthesia, the uptake of anesthetic into muscle increases, which can contribute to delayed recovery. The poorly perfused group receives only 5% of cardiac output. Despite its low blood flow, fat can store significant amounts of anesthetic over time, especially during prolonged anesthesia. This leads to slower elimination and can prolong emergence from anesthesia, particularly in obese patients. The least perfused group has a negligible role in anesthetic distribution. In clinical practice, cardiac output significantly affects anesthetic uptake. A higher cardiac output increases blood flow to peripheral tissues, slowing the rise in alveolar concentration and delaying induction. Conversely, a lower cardiac output directs more anesthetic to the vessel-rich group, leading to faster induction.